Hey guys, Andy Gutierrez from the Star Wars Show here live at Facebook London with Daisy Ridley. Hello. Hi, Daisy. Hi. Hi, everyone. <laughs> so to celebrate the release of the Last Jedi on home video, we are taking some of your questions that you submitted with the hashtag Ask Daisy Ridley. So let's catch up because we haven't talked in a little while. We haven't. <laughs> we have not talked for the last ten minutes. <laughs> A lot of the fans have been asking how your life has been going since you started working on Star Wars. So our first question comes from uh, at Caitlin1 on Instagram. She wants to know what your favorite thing to do in your free time is. Because um, I'm sure you have a ton of free time. It's been very nice because the past couple months I've not been working. And I'm very, very grateful to have been as busy as I am. But I was also very, very tired um, by the time um, Jedi came out. So in my free time, I do a lot of washing. I really like washing my clothes. Oh. Um, been catching up on TV, um, watching some films, seeing my family. It's been great. That's nice, yeah. living a normal life. Yeah, it's been really lovely. Yeah, it's amazing how much uh, doing your laundry can feel really great after Really a while. good. Also having a nap. Ooh. I've been having naps this week. I'm also jet-lagged, but I've been having naps this week, and it's a beautiful thing to be able to have a nap. <laughs> Very important in your training. Yeah. Our, uh, our next question here is a video question. We'll pull it up here on the screen for you. Hi, Star Wars. I have a question, please, for Daisy. So I recently heard that Kelly Marie Tran, who played Rose, went to a Star Wars-inspired restaurant and talked to cosplayers there, and they did not recognize her. Have you ever had an experience yourself with a Star Wars fan, or especially a Ray fan, who talked to you and did not recognize you? I I do like that she told me who Kelly played. <laughs> like, yeah. Oh yeah, I do know yeah. her. <laughs> um, thanks for the question. Um, the one time I probably noticed it is I was doing a film called Chaos Walking, in which I wore a blonde wig, and uh, there was a, a boy coming in, and I was working with Tom Holland who plays Spider Man. There was a boy coming in who apparently really loved Star Wars and really loved Spider Man. So when he met Tom, he was like, "Oh my god!" And then he met me, and he was super sweet. But, and people kept making out like he was a big Star fan. I was like, really? And then someone said it was because he had been a little bit confused because I didn't quite look like myself. Because <laughs> you had a wig on? Yeah, but he was still very sweet. Wow. So did you, did you ever, like, wear the wig out in public to try and go incognito, hide a little bit? I'm sure that would be kind of fun. Um, I would totally screw with people, the, though. The only wigs I have are, like, pink ones. In fact, no. I went to Winter Wonderland um, in December... Uh, like three days after the premiere here wearing a sort of elf wig like a gnome wig mm -hmm. that was blue and very subtle yeah but it worked <laughs> but I didn't do it to blend in we do it because it's like a yearly thing that me and my pals like to wear wigs and go to Winter Wonderland why not exactly <laughs> um, but yeah it felt nice and so you find now that you know The Force Awakens and The Last Jedi have come out your career's absolutely skyrocketed it's hard for you to kind of go around the streets without being recognized or noticed? Um, like, I still go on the tube and stuff. It's, um, and occasionally it does happen. People are super cool. Um, but there are, uh, it's definitely a, a bit more different because you sort of become a bit self-aware, mm -hmm. which you're not used to if you're sort of just walking around. But people are always very polite, lovely. That's nice. Yeah. That's good to hear. Uh, at Leia Pose from Twitter mm -hmm. asks... Oh, this is fun. Have you ever met a celebrity and been really starstruck? Um, um, yeah. When I met... The thing is, it was funny because I was sort of like, Ugh, obviously doing Star Wars. And then um, it was ridiculous because I went to the Oscars and there were these parties sort of around it. But Danny DeVito, I sort of sat down with Danny DeVito and I was talking to him because I knew he did this troll foot thing. So we were talking about his troll foot and I was like, this is insane. He just takes a picture of one of his feet in various different places. Interesting. Yeah, he just does it as a thing. And then when I met Meryl Streep, I was like... Well, yeah. How yeah. Do, yeah, how do you keep your cool when you meet Meryl? That's... I mean, I didn't. Luckily, my, my <laughs> agent was like, oh, hi, Meryl. I was like, hello. And then I backed away slowly. Uh, yeah, that would be... I have no chill. No. No. So... But also, it's like that thing of, in general, it's weird to just talk to someone when you have sort of when you've just met them. Like, right. I'm not great at, at initial meetings with people. So already I'm like, uh, yeah. what do you like to eat? <laughs> I'm sure that, like... <laughs> There's no conversation yeah, anyway. That added weirdness of being like, I know you, but I don't know exactly. you at all. Yeah. yeah. That's got to be strange. 
Um, let's see, we have another video question coming up. Great. Hi, Daisy. This Hello. is Soleil from Atlanta, Georgia. Ooh. You've spoken in the past about how you really admired John Williams. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering if there's any particular moments or scenes in The Force Awakens or The Last Jedi where you feel like the music really made the scene. And on a slightly different but related note, do you play any instruments? And are, are there any instruments you wish you could play? Um, I'm I'm in a film called Peter Rabbit, which is coming out next week. And today I did an interview with James Corden, and he found out I used to play violin, so he's made it his life's mission for me to play the Star Wars theme on the set of Star Wars. <laughs> and he's friends with JJ, so you know now it's going to have to happen now. Now you just told everybody it could happen. Um, <laughs> the a big music moment. I was there for some of the scoring for, in fact, both films. But I think I remember the scoring for Force Awakens so vividly because I'd never seen anything like it. And they were showing footage at the same time because John was um, conducting with the picture. It was the most oh, crazy amazing. thing. Um, and there was a moment when Kylo stabs his pa and he was con and we were the only ones that could see the screen because obviously the orchestra couldn't. And I was like, I was crying. It was so moving. And then he also somehow that day was doing the bit with the lightsaber into my hand. I Those was like, are, that's yeah. epic. Those are some pretty powerful moments yeah. to be. And, and he's just a legend. I got to see him uh, conduct one time at the Hollywood Bowl, and it's just like... Did you go in September last year? No, I went and saw him uh, conduct E.T. a couple summers ago. Oh, it was super wow. cool. Yeah. Yeah, he's coming to England this year. Can't wait. He's a really wonderful man. We sort of became pen pals for a while. See, that's cool. See, he's that's just... one of those. He's one of those people. I don't think I've had a chance to meet yet that I would be like super starstruck. It's, it's quite. And every time, I can't believe he sort of remembered me. He's really, and he still scores in pencil and stuff. He's old school. Amazing. Love it. Yeah. Love it. So now that you have a lot of free time, though, you can pick up the violin again, right? <laughs> Do you know, I found it in my house the other day, and I wanted to, like, give it to someone that needed it. Um, That's sweet. But I've yet to, to go asking around. But maybe I should. Yeah. Maybe dust it I off should. or dust it off. Yeah. All right. So now we've got some, some questions about, about Ray, because mm -hmm. obviously, you know, getting to know the character a lot mm -hmm. more. You've been playing her for a couple of years now. Mm -hmm. uh, at M. Harris from Twitter mm -hmm. asks, uh, what is your favorite quality that Ray possesses? That she is very hopeful. I think it's really wonderful to see someone, like she's been so lonely her whole life and it's been very difficult. And um, uh, I think the fact that she reacts in the way she does to new people coming into her life, she's trying to help BBA, even though initially she's like, go away. She then does everything she can to help him. She does everything she can to help Finn. Mm -hmm. And even though everything is sort of crazy and, and everything's being thrown at her and she didn't really ask for any of it, she's so hopeful going right. forward. And really, as we've seen from Jedi, she really sees the like glimmer in Kylo. Absolutely. That there's like some good there. And she goes with it. And I think that's pretty wonderful. That is pretty wonderful. Yeah. But I mean, it's also a bit to her detriment. You know, she she believes in people who might be completely irredeemable. I don't think so. Nope. Because I think he is redeemable. There is a moment that he is redeemable. He does the right thing for a moment, even though the right thing is a terrible thing in the mm -hmm. grand scheme of things, to kill another person. Right. Um, he does the right thing just then in order to help her. And also he thinks, I'm not saying that he's right, but he does think what he's doing is the right thing. He's not like, oh, I'm so evil. Um, so I think it's... it's uh, I don't think it's so The bad guys never think they're bad guys. No. They never do. No. So would you say that that's a, a quality that, like, you've wanted to embody more? Or in what ways are you like Ray? Or are you guys similar? I am quite trusting. I'm becoming a little bit more cynical. But I am quite um, trusting, and I do put a lot in people. And I don't have... Um, I, guess, I guess she has boundaries, but I'm, like, I'm just there. Like, if something feels like the right thing, I'm just there, all in. All right. Uh, on the flip side of that, uh, at Isabella MX from Twitter mm -hmm. asks, besides her longing for her family and parents, what would you say is another weakness for Ray? I do not think that is a weakness. 
great question, but I don't think it's a weakness. I think longing for something, um, there's usually a reason you're longing for it. And um, even though she's very hopeful about moving forward, there's clearly some stuff that she needs to put to bed. And um, that is all going to help her moving forward. So I don't think that's a weakness. I think it's a wonderful, again, sort of adds to the brilliant hopefulness that that what may have happened wasn't so bad, like that she wasn't just left there by these sort of awful mm -hmm. people. Um, so even that, I think... And also it leads her on this amazing journey. Yeah. That's part of the whole thing. She wouldn't have gone... I think she wouldn't have stayed if she didn't really want that. She wouldn't have had the moment with Luke and then all of the other sort of amazing stuff that had happened. Um, so, yeah. Do you think she has any just kind of inherent weaknesses or... I mean, I don't really believe in weaknesses in people. Okay. Um, I like that outlook. It's yeah. It's very positive. Because I think you can't sort of decide, like, what's good and what's bad in a person. Because mm -hmm. everything is the, makes the whole. And the whole is greater than the sum of the parts, as we know. Um, yeah, I, And I think those things... I for sure think people can work on themselves, like, with things like anger and jealousy. Right. Maybe things like that. But that's workable. That's not something that's fixed that can't be changed. You can, like, work on that. Okay. And I don't think she's... I don't think she's those things. Okay, fair enough. Uh, Brandon Camhem from Facebook <laughs> wants to know, which was the most difficult scene to film and what did you learn from it? Um... It was quite emotional filming this one. I felt like the first one was very emotional for a load of reasons too. But this one is, um, for Ray at least, much more of a like still searching. Um, and she's confronting things that I don't think she's ever sort of thought of about th that this was ever going to be the time to confront them. Mm -hmm. um, there, there were a couple of things that were de in deleted scenes that I think are being released on the DVD. Um, one of which is a conversation she has with Luke because um, he sort of makes he makes a joke about it's this whole thing I don't even think I can explain it but he makes a joke about these people coming and invading the island and she's like running with the saber like ready to fight the good fight and it's the caretakers having a party and that that scene was really difficult as in we couldn't do it that night and we came back and we had to sort of re-talk about it because she, it's, I think it's the first time that she's really she was really disappointed in someone and she couldn't quite get why she was there and everything. So that was very difficult doing that. Mm -hmm. And then they cut it out. Um, all that work. <laughs> all that work, all that stress. Um, in terms of the things that were in there, um, the stuff that was... Uh, the, the thing I found very, not difficult, but it really took a lot out of me, was the scene with Kylo, um, which is sort of the flashback, but we filmed the whole scene as one. Mm -hmm. And I remember, like we did it and it was so upsetting because it's the first time she's really talked about how lonely she is and I remember thinking how awful like just waiting um, and just feeling this incredible loneliness and she thinks she's found someone in Luke and he's just not giving that right. she, he's just not offering it to her and I remember walking outside we were filming it in Ireland even though we were doing it inside and Adam was there and I remember going outside and like I had to take a bit of time because it was it's pretty. There was a lot of emotional, yeah. really like tough emotional work that she yeah. went through in this one. So yeah. would you say that's that's definitely more difficult to shoot and to prepare for than say like the physical side of things? No, or? I think they both have their difficulties, but it's just interesting that things take it out of you in different ways. Because yeah. everyone knows like if you've cried for four hours, you're tired. But then obviously if you're doing that at the beginning of the day and then you have to go back and do a different scene or... Yeah. That's what's like, oh. How do you manage that? Like, I ate a lot of chocolate that day. <laughs> you just got to, like, feed up the, get yeah. the sugar in there. Yeah, because, I mean, having to switch gears of yeah. what kind of emotional state you're in, mm. I, that's got to be exhausting. Yeah. Yeah, but also wonderful, because working with Adam and working with Mark and everyone else, they're so patient and generous, and, like, we could have done it as many times as any of us needed it. Um, but it's really tiring in an emotional way. Yeah. Um, speaking of Mark, mm. Alex Overton from Facebook asks, mm -hmm. what was your reaction when you found out you'd be working so closely with Mark Hamill? I mean, I think when I found out I was working on it, I didn't know initially who I was working with, like, per 
Right. Sorry about that. And this is talking. This per is back episode. When this is like four years ago. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So I heard I got the part, and I hadn't read the script. So then I read the script, and I was like, "Oh my god!" Um, and so even in the scene that seems so small, like working with Mark was amazing, as was working with Harrison and Carrie. Um, and then I realised that I think I've been able to work with almost everyone, which is awesome. <laughs> Um, so working with Mark, getting to like really work with him was great. He's a wonderful yeah. man. He's really caring. He's like brilliant in the film. And so generous with just his, everything, his, himself, time like, and energy. Yeah. And, um, so yeah, it was, it was great. Shout out to Mark. Got his star on the walk. Of fame I yesterday. Know. Super cool. About so cool. time. Yeah. About time. Um, let's see. Here we go. Next question is about Mark as well. Mm. Uh, at Battle Droid B1 on wow. Twitter. Nice. Asks, how was it to work with Mark Hamill in The Last Jedi? It was great. Yeah. It was all of those things. Also, it's interesting because I don't like know all the canon and extended universe and like the, the sort of deep history of mm-hmm. There's Star a lot. Wars. Yeah. <laughs> There's a and lot. so it was interesting because the scenes we were doing, I was like, oh, no way. Oh, what you're saying makes sense like with me and with Ray so it was um, it was great it was great yeah how I mean you weren't a massive Star Wars fan before you became involved with it no how much have you like taken on diving into all of that because there really is just a ton I mean you're an incredibly busy person but um I mean I know a lot more about it <laughs> um and I understand the love more for it now yeah um I mean I did genuinely I didn't know it was as loved as it is um but, but also it's just fun to, like, I literally get to play a part and then I sort of go home. So it's also nice to um, sort of step back and see it, like, from a me point of view. Mm-hmm. It's quite nice to be able to do that too and not to feel like, you know, I have to be, I have to know all this stuff. It's nice to just learn it organically. Yeah. And then be like, oh. And the yeah. homework's fun, you know. Exactly. Yeah, it's super cool. Yeah. Um, so now we are going to do a, a scene from The Last Jedi here, um, since we've been talking about Mark, where okay. you confront Luke okay. on Okshita Island. Ew, such, what happens next? <laughs> it's such no a powerful knows. scene. Um, you know, what was it like shooting that scene? Obviously, it's very physical, and the elements were, mm. you know, mm. kind of extreme. And The thing is... That was a wonderful freezing cold rain machine because they had thought that the weather in Ireland was going to be much worse than it was and it was baking the entire time Um, because Ireland's known for being a little bit rainy. So Mm -hmm. they had to add those wonderful rain machines. Um, And we also had to film that at night. Um, And Adam and I had stayed up late the night before chatting um, and I wasn't expecting to do all of my coverage that day. And our incredible, sorry, this is a lot of lot of info for you, but our incredible um, stunt coordinator, Rob, and our fight choreographer, Cece, were there. And we, would, we were sort of doing runs of it, but it's mm-hmm. a long fight. Yeah. As in, I literally was like, if I do this one more time, I'm going to pass out, I can't breathe. But hearing people literally go, carry on, do it again, Dace, you can do it. I was like, okay, I'll do it again. So it was, it was the most I've ever pushed myself physically. Because doing that three times, I was like, I'm going to pass out. Well, I mean, and the the intensity, I mean, you can tell you're really putting it all in there. Mm. Um, you know, when you're when you're fighting with these, you know, the staff that you're using mm. is heavy rubber, right? It is heavy, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's... Gotta... And then there's, like, the Hero one, which I don't actually know what it's made from, but they're heavy. Yeah, they're definitely heavy. I've held the, the rubber one. That yeah, you cause we, with. and we practice with a lighter one. So you're like, oh, I got this down, and then you get the heavy one, and you're like, oh, wow. <laughs> well, that's nice. Yeah. You have to do it for real. It's, like, yeah. even harder. Yeah. Cool, cool. So, I mean, a lot of fans were asking also about what it was like shooting on Skellig, because mm. it's such a beautiful location mm. and so unique. Yeah. What was that? I mean... I mean, the first time we went, I was very, very sick Um, because I had adrenal exhaustion. So I was being very, very sick while they were doing something, and then I sort of emerged from the tent. I was like, okay, I'm ready. So then when we went back, it was awesome. Um, And we did pre-shooting before um, uh, Force Awakens came out. So it was really weird, because there was sort of no context, and we had filmed the other one so long before. Um, But it was beautiful, it was great. The, I thought the scene was so funny with him throwing it. And everyone was like, oh, my God. And I think that was one of the first ones we did. 
Um, and it's just a really small crew, so it was wonderful. Right, because when you, I mean, the the last shot I picks up right where yeah. the Force Awakens left off. Did you shoot that at the no. scene at the same time? You no. didn't. No. And they were doing it from different angles. I was thinking, I can't remember what I thought last time when I was handing Wait, it to him. Which it. way was I Am seeing? I, like, thought, literally, I was like, which hand did I hold that out with? Um, but Skellig was beautiful, and we got to film in a lot of other parts of Ireland. So great. Yeah, rough life, traveling the world. Do you have a favorite so location that you've shot on? Um, Ireland was was yeah. up there. But Abu Dhabi was the first day filming ever, mm -hmm. and it was amazing, and we were all there for two weeks. Um, so, yeah, pretty lucky. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, let's see. I believe we have another video question next. Um, hi, Daisy. My name's Hermione. How does it feel to be on the Whammy and Falcon? Oh, That's the cutest ever. Did she say her name's Romani? Hermione? Hermione. Awesome. Harry so, Potter reference. So yeah, I mean, being inside the Millennium Falcon is definitely something that like every Star Wars fan dreams of. It's funny of. because um, when when people saw um, The Force Awakens, I'm friends with a guy who is also like big in the fandom called Brian Fuller, who made Hannibal. Um, and he is in, like incredibly into a lot of things. And I remember... He watched it and he was so moved by the Falcon chase in Force Awakens. Mm -hmm. And I was like, it was really fun filming it, but I don't think I realised the sort of massive significance it held for people. Um, so I had the best time, even at, sort of without context. Yeah. And then within context of it all, um, it was it was pretty awesome. It was pretty cool. And they did it exactly the same. There was this amazing guy, the specialist. They had blueprints of everything props were exactly the same buttons were exactly the same yeah. i've talked to those guys they are meticulous yeah. yeah yeah i visited set and got to see the outside of the millennium falcon mm. and like i lost it yeah. so i can't imagine full size too i know it was, mm. i definitely got laughed at for crying <laughs> it was cool it you know wasn't nerdy at all <laughs> um yeah anywho moving on um <laughs> at dx the vaders nice yeah um from twitter says, hello, who hello. in the cast is most and least like their character? The the least like their character is Donal. <laughs> yeah. Donal. Um, he's such a lovely, lovely man. He's very funny, but Hux is unintentionally funny, coupled with Kylo, and Donal's just very funny. The most like their character... Um... I don't know. Maybe Harrison? The sort of, like, super cool pilot yeah. who's yeah. just, like, German. Does, does his thing. Just does his thing, swoops in, swoops out, makes everyone feel good. <laughs> yeah. like, all right, cool. Yeah. All right. Oh, all right. Someone had to ask it. So, uh, E. Karma Abigail from Twitter. Oh, God. Wants to know your thoughts on Porgs. Porgs are fine. Porgs are fine. <laughs> They're cute. I will say, as I kept saying in the interviews when we were promoting the film, we turned up for work every day for six months, and those porgs were there for three days maximum. Mm -hmm. And they got more love than than us. And I'm not okay with that. I'm so sorry. Is, that, and is I this thought, something you want to talk about? Is it really sad? Um, I don't just really want to be loved like the porgs. Um, the porks are great, man. They're cool. I love the puppeteers, so it was awesome because the puppeteers were puppeteering the porks. Oh. But I mean, that's real talk. Like we all worked really hard, <laughs> and everyone's like, "But let's talk let's about talk the about space the penguins, please." Let's talk about their motivations, yeah. their intentions. Where where are they really, you know, coming from in this performance? I mean, but you mentioned working with the puppeteers. Mm. I mean, the creatures in Amazing. these movies are. Absolutely phenomenal, and I've mm. gotten to know some of the people who build them mm. and operate them. Were there any? I mean, seeing like the the giant the hapabore, like the giant pig from oh, Force Awakens, that was great. seeing that stuff in real, yeah. like in person, and having to interact with it. What mm. is that like for you? I mean, what's great is my dad came to um, set when we were doing the beginning of Jedi, and he met Neil Scanlon, who was the head of creatures, and his catchphrase now is "What would Neil do?" because he. As Neil is, he thinks he's... And my dad is not, like, that blown away by many people. He's 
awesome. Mm -hmm. So he's just, you know, like he likes people. But he is so blown away by Neil's mind, the things that Neil's done, because he worked on Harry Potter too, he's worked on so many things, but he's done the most incredible varied things. So when we came to set the first time in Abu Dhabi and the Hapa Ball was there, it was ridiculous because the whole thing looked yeah. like a town that you could walk into. Um, and then obviously getting to work with BB-8 a lot. I worked a lot with Brian and Dave and Matt and that awesome and I was very sad not to be working with them all this time. I actually saw Brian the other day he says hello. Oh, <laughs> love Brian <laughs> totally off topic um, they're just it, it's wonderful and because they're a lot of them are puppeteered to see people with a craft like that something that you wouldn't necessarily like I wouldn't necessarily see someone puppeteering like in front of me to see the skill is yeah. like mind blowing I mean there's BB-8 especially is just the perfect so example. So much life and personality and... It's amazing. It's yeah. amazing what they do. Yeah. I mean, and it, it never gets old. Like, I see BB-8 at an event and I'm like, yeah. oh my God, am I? But now they have the one that rolls around by himself. I'm like, Brian and Dave, where are you? <laughs> and Dave actually worked on Yoda and he said that was amazing. Yeah. 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 That's, that's, got, that's gotta be the coolest job. Yeah. That, that I think is my dream job, being yeah. in the creature shop. Mm. All right. Our next question comes from Facebook mm -hmm. from Kat Edlin Barnes. Mm -hmm. She says, what was it like filming on Skellig Michael for The Last Jedi, and what was your favorite location to film at? We did already go over We've that. We've covered that, but yeah. thanks for the question. Sorry, Kat. Um, let's see. We have another video question next. Hello, Miss Ridley. My question for you is, which way of fighting did you prefer? With the staff or with a lightsaber? Or maybe in the future with a different kind of way? So this was my question by a friendly Wookiee. <laughs> wow. That beard was amazing. That is and a that Wookie. sound was amazing. Um, I think the staff was the thing I trained with first. Mm -hmm. So it always felt like that's like Ray's thing. Yeah. Um, and then obviously the lightsaber becomes a bit more Ray's thing, but the staff was always like the thing. Um... And then I think it got it, it was different too because in Jedi physically I was much stronger, so it felt I felt more power in what I was doing. Um, so it's nice that there's been a sort of progression with the lightsaber, whereas with the staff, mm -hmm. um, the fight it was it was le much less fighting. So I felt like oh yeah, I, I'm like pretty happy with that. And then with the lightsaber, I really have felt a uh, progression in yeah. terms of. Um, what are they called? Weapons moving forward. I don't know what's going to be happening. I'm sure I may find out soon. I, yeah, they'll, they'll probably tell you. Maybe they'll tell me one day. But, I mean, the there were so many questions about your training process mm. for all of this. I mean, you've had to learn various martial arts, mm. all kinds of choreography. I mean, it's not martial arts. When you see people do martial arts, you're like, that's martial arts. It's martial arts based, I guess. Because I wanted to learn a martial arts afterwards and then turned up to a karate class and it was um, three-year-olds that had just got a badge in something. No, a belt. And so I left that class. I was sort of told by the teacher that I couldn't face up to those kids. So I got back in my car and went home. So I felt like karate's off there. Okay. Um, learning essentially sort of wushu with Liang, who's a... Brilliant. Wushu Jedi. Yeah. Um, was amazing. Uh, it does feel incredible to have learned new skills. Um, really incredible. But the stunt teams... They, they were sort of the first people I ever met, so it was quite emotional with them anyway. Um, and I think the only way you can really, for me, do well in things like that is to be surrounded by people who are really encouraging. Yeah, I mean, and they all really were. Dedicating a lot of time and, yeah. and energy to it. Um, Alex de Reich from Facebook says, in comparison to your four hours a day, four days a week training regimen for The Force Awakens, mm. what was your workout regimen for The Last Jedi? I had been training... Um, uh, between the films, sort of. And then when we got into it, I had no time for, like, a solid amount of training before the film. So I was training around filming, uh, which was pretty scary because the fight that we did was, I think, the longest in Star Wars history. Um, I was very thrilled I did it all. Um, it was it was intense. And there were there were a couple shots in it. Like, there's a shot where Adam's doing something and then they come through to find me. Mm -hmm. And if one thing was wrong, we had to start again. And we did 25 takes of that. And it was boiling because also as the fire started, it was insanely hot. Yeah. Um, 
So it was it was full on, but great. Well, like, I mean, yeah. really satisfying. Yeah, we have a bunch of questions about that scene specifically coming yeah. up because like that's just that's my favorite fight in all of Star Wars. Thanks. It is so dope. It is so much fun. It felt to watch. really great doing it, even though it was genuine. As in. Like, people were like, we have to have a timeout and sort of... Because also, the guys in the masks were boiling hot. They literally couldn't see anything. Mm-hmm. And people were sort of getting smacked around a little bit. Well, let's let's watch that clip real quick. And then um, we've got a few questions about Okay. Hi, Daisy Ridley. My name is Claire, and I'm from Leicester, England. Um, first of all, I want to thank you so very much for your portrayal of Rey in The Last Jedi and The Force Awakens. My question that I'd like to ask you is... What was your favorite part about filming Ray's training in The Last Jedi? That wasn't the clip of that fighting. That was not the clip of the fight. It was a question about fighting. Mm-hmm. Um, it was probably, uh, oh, I guess the training isn't necessarily included in that fight. But it's nice to be doing something with someone else, like sparring with a rock, cool, whatever. <laughs> um, but doing the fight, even though it was like, it took a lot of time. It was it was difficult. It was just so satisfying. What was it like seeing it for the first time? Because it's, I mean, something you work so hard to put together and then it... Honestly, I hate watching, like, I just, it's awful watching yourself. But the fight, I was, like, awesome. Because I think I felt so much stronger that I knew I did better. And when it's something is physical, when it's emotional, you can't measure it. Um, but when it's physical, I could measure my improvement. Mm-hmm. So that felt satisfying. Um, and also being in an audience when the sabre flies into the hand and then we both get up, it was really amazing. Yeah, that's an awesome fight. Yeah. All right. So we have to wrap it up here, but we did get a lot of questions about food, so let's rapid fire okay. do the food questions real quick. All right. I've become a vegan. No, so. <laughs> so what do you like to cook? <sighs> I've, I've not been cooking much. What did I cook yesterday? I cooked an aubergine and tofu black bean sauce thing. It, it was not great. Usually what I cook is pretty good. It was genuinely not good, but I have leftovers in the fridge. I'm going to plow through tonight. All right, at Daisy X Angel from Twitter says, what's your favorite flavor of ice cream? Or ice cream-like product, I guess. Um, there is a great Ben & Jerry's dairy-free one that's chocolate, but I'm always up for a citrus sorbet or a mango sorbet. Mango. Uh, do you miss space bread? That space bread was pretty good, you know. And it was halloumi back when I ate cheese. It was pretty delicious. Eating it over and over again, I was like, oh. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it was pretty good. All right. They treat me well, though. Uh, the Collector 04 from Instagram says, do you prefer crunchy or smooth peanut butter? Crunchy. All right. Smooth, may, like, creeps me out a wee bit. Although there's this amazing machine in America, as anyone will know, where you literally see the peanuts just rolling through and becoming peanut butter, and then I love the smooth one. Okay. Oh. Um, that's oh, gone. Oh. Has it gone? I guess we are wrapping up here, guys. Oh, no. Thank you for joining ah. us, Daisy. <laughs> guys, <laughs> uh, make sure you pick up the, the Last Jedi when it comes home to, uh, in digital. Movies Anywhere, 4K UHD on March 13th, and Blu ray on March 27th. Thanks for watching. Thank May the Force you. be with you.